Project Brutality is an add-on for Brutal Doom that's like the video game equivalent of a really edgy kid's MySpace page. I think we all had a friend like that back in the day whose MySpace page had a really dark colored template and some kind of Linkin Park song playing when the page fully loaded. That's what Project Brutality feels like to me. It's this really edgy, over-the-top expansion to Brutal Doom that has more features than you can poke a stick at. And just like that proverbial edgy kid on MySpace, if you talk shit about Project Brutality, you can bet your bottom dollar you'll end up with some kind of death threat involving katanas and Krav Maga. Okay, look, all snide jokes aside, Project Brutality ain't all that bad. In fact, it's pretty damn good. It's just got about as much stuff packed into it as I think a Doom mod could possibly ever get. There's so many versions of the mod out there as well that I'm genuinely not even sure if I'm playing the most current version. That's how over the top and ridiculous the whole thing's gotten. And let me tell you, Sunny Jims, I've had more than a few people request for me to do a video on this mod. So let's delve into this asshole and see what all the goddamn fuss is about, shall we? Now, being an add-on to Brutal Doom, Project Brutality has a pretty similar goal in mind in the sense that it's all about turning everything up to 11, or in this case, 12 or 13. Right from firing the first shot, in whichever WOD you end up playing, things just get utterly chaotic for almost the entire goddamn time, and you're killing the hordes of enemies in stunningly violent fashion. Now, whereas Brutal Doom just had somewhat modern upgrades to Doom's original lineup, changing the sprites for each of the traditional weapons, Project Brutality offers up a whole heap of new weapons, all fitting into the basic weapon slots depending on what they actually are. So you don't just have the pistol bound to the number two slot, now you've also got a revolver and a submachine gun. On the shotgun side of things, you obviously get the old chestnuts, the pump action and the double barrel shotgun, but now you can also get an automatic shotgun as well. The chain gun now shares its slot with a couple of assault rifles and a more powerful minigun. The rocket launcher with a couple of grenade launchers and the plasma rifle expectedly also has a more powerful variant. On that note, I'd say hands down my favorite is the upgraded plasma rifle, which functions like a fast firing railgun and does massive damage whilst using very little ammunition. Then there's the more specialized weapons like the Mancubus cannon, the Revenant missile launchers and the black hole gun. I understand too that some of these weapon sprites have been around for a dog's age, but most of them I was seeing for the first time, and mostly I was really impressed. Just to add a little bit more depth to the shooting, all of the weapons also have alternate fire modes as well as a special feature like dual welding or changing the ammo type. And then certain weapons can also be upgraded as well, like adding another two barrels to the minigun because sure, why not? Now in terms of how all these weapons control and feel, they're pretty much faultless. The sprite work is detailed and the animations for each of the weapons when firing and reloading is silky smooth. I like the attention to detail in the way that the weapon you're using is going to change the death animation for enemies. So if you shoot an enemy with a shotgun for instance, you can expect to simply take large chunks out of them. But fire at them with the plasma rifle or the mancubus cannon, then they'll get ignited and leave a charred corpse. Wounded enemies might not even be fully killed and crawl around on the ground holding on to what remains of their existence until the player finishes them off entirely. And the mod is full of these little touches and features you'll keep seeing the more you play which is really I think what makes these kind of mods so great. Regardless of what you're using it feels like you're just unleashing absolute hell. I mean even the smaller weapons like the submachine gun or the assault rifles just have this real sense of oomph to them. The auto shotgun, for instance, sounds like a goddamn howitzer, and the automatic grenade launcher even more so. It probably doesn't hurt that enemies aren't shy and spurting blood in all different directions and losing body parts when you're shooting them. On top of all of that shit, you can call in reinforcements, you can drop down turrets and throw out proximity mines or grenades, the latter which are arguably overpowered and can quite literally clear an entire room of enemies in a single blast. I also think it's kind of sad in a lot of ways that a bunch of modders working with an almost 30 year old game engine can create more powerful and impactful feeling weapons than what we get in a lot of more modern shooting games. Sadly the mod does have some utterly horrid screen shaking when you're firing certain weapons with the chain gun or minigun I think being the worst defender. When you go through the options menu there's the option to turn off things like the bullet holes on the player's heads up display and various other effects like acid, blood or water splashing across the screen. But yet the choice to turn off this abhorrent weapon shake when firing weapons is omitted for some idiotic reason. Kinda sucks too because both the minigun and the heavy minigun are half decent weapons but it just makes it so much tricky to see what the hell you're shooting at when the screen is having an epileptic fit. The iron sights seem like a bit of a weird addition as well, I mean you can play the entire thing fine without ever really having to use them, save for maybe a couple of times when you're having to take out zombie men from a long distance but otherwise it's a little bit redundant. 
On the subject of zombie men, I have to say that one thing that always shits me about Doom mods, and it seems to be the vast majority of those made, is how people always fuck around with the way the zombie men behave. Mostly just by making them attack much faster and giving them different abilities like being able to throw grenades and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's great in the way that it makes them a bit more challenging and an actual threat, but there's kind of a downside in a way because they come off as a little bit unbalanced when you're trying to play vanilla maps. When the level designers that did software were making some of the maps in Doom 2, for instance, and they added in rooms of two or three dozen zombie men and shotgun sergeants, they probably did that without the assumption that all of these enemies would be doing increased damage 24 years later in fan-made mods. Zombie men and shotgun sergeants, ironically being the weakest enemies in the game, now become, I think, objectively one of the most dangerous due to their hit-scanning behavior. And a small group of them can now kill you in a really short amount of time. There's also so many different variants of them now that I find it tricky to track who is actually who. I mean, in Vanilla Doom, you could see the sprite for either the zombie man, the shotgun sergeant, or the chain gunner, and instantly know what you're up against and act accordingly. I just found this isn't the case in Project Brutality, and as a result, you just kind of fire at all of them and hope for the best. This does kind of carry across to the imps as well, who now have this sort of leaping attack similar to what they had in Brutal Doom. Now, whilst this mechanic isn't a deal breaker, again, a lot of the areas in the original maps weren't designed with this in mind. So if you teleport into a room where you've got a lot of imps in close to medium range, well, chances are they're all gonna leap at you by default, as they generally do when you're in that range. At which point, there's not really anything you can do except load the last quick save. Now look, these aren't bad mechanics, I'm not heaping shit on the mod in that sense, and I understand that it's really put in there to make every aspect of the combat as challenging as possible. That's all fine and dandy. I'm simply saying that when it's applied to the base game, it doesn't always work as fairly as intended. And it does, as I said, make certain vanilla maps just horribly unbalanced and not as enjoyable as they originally were. Some of the maps in Doom 2 in particular are just utter shite. Speaking of Doom 2, I think if you're going to play Project Brutality with any WAD, then you're probably best off using Doom 2, as is the case with most Doom mods. For obvious reasons, it gives you access to all of the weapons, and you get to fight the entire enemy roster as well. Without getting into a debate about which game is better, I do have to say that I think for the purpose of a mod like this, the levels in Doom 2 also facilitate the features of the mod a lot better. Some of the levels have enemy counts around 150 to 200, which lets you rip and tear a lot more than you could in, you know, Knee Deep in the Dead, for instance, when there's only a few dozen. Overall though, I do genuinely struggle to find things to complain about with Project Brutality. The whole thing goes off the notion that if a little is good, then more must be better. And that really seems to be the mantra for Project Brutality with all its new weapons, enemy sprites, animations and features. Kind of again harks back to that old saying of flinging shit at a wall and seeing what sticks, and it's just lucky that 90% of the time here, most of it sticks. The amount of work that must have gone into the whole thing is legendary, almost fanatical, and the fact that most of this stuff works cohesively with the game is commendable. I have to admit too that I didn't like the whole thing all that much initially, but after I'd played a few maps and gotten my hands on some of the new weapons, I started to enjoy it a lot more and could appreciate everything the mod had on offer. We really are a bunch of spoilt pricks when it comes to Doom mods, and I think you'd honestly be more hard pressed to find a bad mod than a good one. Project Brutality I think is definitely one of the better ones out there, even if it isn't exactly standalone, borrowing heavily from Brutal Doom and even if it does have balancing issues out the wazoo. To get the whole thing running takes probably 5 minutes total, and after that you'll get hours and hours of fun, blowing away demons with loud, hard-hitting weaponry until your fingertips are sore and your asshole bleeds. Now all we need is the Project Brutality add-on for HDoom, and then we're really cooking with gas.